So plenum or non-plenum cabling, which is it? So oftentimes we are brought in to design a cabling system and decide what the build materials and implementation is gonna look like. And the question comes up, hey, do we need plenum or non-plenum copper cabling? And often the easy answer is we just refer to the architect who has designed the building and they're gonna be able to tell us what it was designed for and we'll run with that. However, in a lot of cases, we have existing buildings that we're dealing with and we're putting some cabling in and there's no architect involved and we still need to figure out what kind of cable to use. So in most cases, it just comes down to how the ceiling itself is ventilated. And so in a non-plenum environment, we have air ducts that are going on for both the uh, forced air supply and the forced air return. So what you can see here is that on a forced air supply, this is your typical um, AC or heating system. It's got duct work that, that goes there, it goes down to vents and pushes air into uh, the, the open space below, in the workspace here below. Versus in the return air then, the air that is sucked up into uh, the ceiling also goes up into a duct and then it's sent out of the building. And so that space above the ceiling then, when I've got duct work in place, it has both a forced air in and a forced air out using duct work, then that is a non-plenum environment. And, and, and so in that case, I can use non-plenum cabling up here in this open spaced uh, area above the work area. Okay, so when we have a ventilated area that's meant for a plenum or we have a plenum ceiling that's there, we have a forced air supply that is going through duct work pushing air down, and then we have forced air return that's pushing air up, but instead of it going up into duct work and going out, it just goes up into the open ceiling that's above. And so when we have a space like that where the air is being actively used in this space above, it's called a plenum airspace. And a plenum area like this reacts to fire differently. The main difference between plenum and non-plenum cabling is the sheath that goes around the cable itself. And so the, the plenum cabling has been manufactured to handle higher temperatures and has a different kind of smoke toxicity that goes with it. And as a result, it costs about twice as much as non-plenum cable does. And really why the question comes up so often is do we need it or do we not need it because of the cost that's involved. Now some building owners choose to use plenum cable over non-plenum cable just because uh, it lowers their insurance requirements. And so this often we'll see this in, in hospitals or schools and so forth where those require plenum no matter what, uh, even though non-plenum might be very usable in that circumstance. So the bottom line is this, most of our clients will use non-plenum cabling about 90% of the time. It's just important to know the difference and know what is required in your building. If you hire an experienced structure cabling vendor, they're gonna know the difference, they'll be looking for that when they're creating their estimate, and they'll be sure and note that on the estimate in the bill of materials when you get it that plenum cable is required.